Hey folks, Joseph Isabora here. <sighs> Boy, do I feel bored having to watch this uh, boring, bland, and very shallow sci fi romantic adventure about two passengers who got stuck inside uh, a spaceship and was awakened from their hibernation pod 90 years too early because the ship was going through a journey to 120 years to another planet. And yes, I'm talking about the film Passengers, which stars uh, Chris Pratt, best known for his role as Star-Lord in Guardians of the Galaxy, and he was also in the film Jurassic World. And you got Jennifer Lawrence, who played uh, a young mystique in the X-Men films, as well as uh, winning her first Oscar in Silver Linings Playbook. Now, when you have two good actors in one film, you're expecting this is going to be quite interesting. Well, it could have been. But sadly, because of the script that they wrote, which is very shallow and a total mess, that it becomes a travesty. It could have been so much better than that. And it's a shame because it really did have some very neat special effects. It actually looks really good too when they shot this movie. For its budget of $110 million. It looks really neat. But they could have done so much better. So that's my problem. But it's hard to believe because originally this was written for Keanu Reeves and... Weiss Witherspoon and then but before uh, it was going to be written by Emily Blunt and I think that could have been interesting to see Keanu Reeves and Emily Blunt star in this particular um, film because I think this movie could have worked in a way but then I'll probably suffer the same problem that the film went for so so it's been in development hell for years since it was written originally in 2007 by a writer named John Spirits and by the way he happens to be the writer who gave us uh, that terrible The Darkest Hour. Also he also co-wrote the film Doctor Strange which just came out uh, before this film did. So at least uh, he's a great writer in, in a way for, for some movies just not uh, particularly perfect they also got uh, Morden Tydum, the director of um, The Imitation Game, which was a great movie that stars uh, Benedict Cumberbatch. So he figured he did it because uh, he thought this would be an interesting uh, project for him to do a more different uh, sci-fi adventure. And it seemed like it's an inspiration to a comic book called 50 Girls 50 by Al Womanson, which um, which was part of a 50's uh, magazine called Weird Science not to be confused with the 1985 film so it, basically it, it is a story about the two passengers uh, stuck in a colony spaceship and and they want to fall in love with each other so there you go so looks neat but sadly it's just very shallow it falls apart really easily. Well, anyway, let's get to the movie. It stars Chris Pratt, Jennifer Lawrence, with Michael Sheen, Lawrence Fishburne, Annie Garcia, and Arfora Powernew. It's written by John Spiris, or Spratz, I don't know, it's kind of hard to pronounce. And it's directed by Morton Tydum. The movie begins set inside a starship called the Avalon, which looks like um, something out of a DNA. Um, also, because if you look at the back, it looks like a broken wheel or something like that. Well, anyway, it's transporting 5,000 passengers, you know, colonies, to a planet called Homestead 2 which is a journey that only takes up to 120 years. 
So the entire crew, which is only 258, and the colonists uh, have been asleep inside the hibernation pods. But as the ship passes through an asteroid field, suddenly it was heavily strained, causing a malfunction that awakened only one passenger. And that was a mechanic engineer named Jim Preston, who was played by Chris Pratt. And he was awakened 90 years earlier. But he was the only one that was awakened for just a year. So he basically spends more time, you know, trying to find out what's going on. He, you know, he was playing video games like that, like that Dance Dance Revolution type of game. Also, uh, a basketball game. He was watching a movie and you know, having a drink and like coffee. And he was trying to fix the, the hibernation pod to see if maybe he can go back to sleep. So he could continue. But it didn't work. Yeah. So then he, he made contact with an android uh, bartender named Arthur, who's played by Michael Sheen. Trying to explain what's going on here because it seems like you know he only gets contact. I mean, basically, I mean, he had a contact with the... Um, with a, uh, a holographic stewardess. He was also considered to commit suicide, but that didn't work out. I mean, he's already having a long beard and since he was going out of it uh, during that particular year of isolation. But he decided that since he didn't want to be alone anymore, he actually met and notice a, a beautiful girl named Aurora Lane, who's played by Jennifer Lawrence, who's already asleep inside the hibernation pod. He begins to find her video profile that she's actually a writer herself, and she actually has some personality. But then he finds out to himself, should he awaken her or not? So... He's been struggling a lot, so much that he decided he had no choice but to awaken her. And once she was awoken, that's when she began to find out what's going on the same way that he's been. So, they basically spend the entire time together, alone inside the ship, and getting to know each other, and, and they eventually fall in love. So everything was going great. You know, they had a couple drinks, they they go around playing video games, uh, watching movies, doing all these fun activities and all that other stuff, and things were going great. We begin to find out that uh, Aurora is just writing a book about how she's spending uh, her time with Jim inside the ship, so everything was going as good as, as, she, as she was hoping it would be. That is until they begin to find out the dark secret, and this is where the film fell apart. When Jim was celebrating uh, Aurora's birthday, and ever since she she woken up, that's when Arthur suddenly uh, spilled the beans because of what Jim actually advised him to say was that, yes indeed, Jim did awaken Aurora. And that's when she starts to become very bitchy. And she got she became so furious that she wants up beating the shit out of him for, for what he did. And that's when things just went downhill from there when, when suddenly another pod failure had occurred where we actually meet... Uh, the chief named Gus uh, Mancuso, who was played by Lawrence Fishburne, who uh, had discovered all the multiple failures that were happening inside the ship. So Gus had attempted to repair with Jim and Aurora's help. Well, Aurora once again still blames him for what he did. Yeah, because it spends the entire time, you know, getting really upset about what happened. Yeah, because she claimed that 
Stealing her life is murder. Fuck. I know it's it's just it's just stupid. It, it's so stupid in so many ways. But anyway, well, Gus was trying to uh, find a way to fix this problem, and he begins to notice what's happening. Suddenly, he, he was falling very ill. His body was failing, so they had to use the medical test to see what's going on inside the auto dock which is a medical diagnosis and treating pod which basically shows that the hibernation pod that he was in was physically damaging his body so he was really suffering really bad he was going to take the pills so hopefully he'll be able to get better but yeah he thought that it wasn't going to help so unfortunately Gus dies just after he gave Jim and Aurora his ID badge to to the access the crew areas to see what's going on so they can repair the ship. So they so they tried so hard to to find a way to fix the entire ship so that way it won't kill all five half of of five thousand uh, passengers that's already inside the hibernation pods. It could have been an interesting movie as far as the stories went but that's where the film just failed and it's too bad though because Chris Pratt was really good in the film it definitely shows that you know he can definitely play a different kind of role anytime he is funny and he's so tough I mean you can tell how he's been going through and having to be awakened from a hibernation pod not knowing where everybody is because he was all alone it, you know just like Robinson Crusoe was like they were castaways that stuck inside um, a sinking ship or a floating ship yeah, Aurora actually said that too in the movie but however Jennifer Lawrence though to me was miscast I, I thought she just played her like like any other character I've seen in movies and and she just goes around running around screaming her head off I knew she was going to do that bitchy mode like she did in, in Silver Linings Playbook that I, I just got tired of it though I mean she acts like a five year old every time she she yells and screams and, and beats the shit out of everybody it's, it's ridiculous I mean come on I, I know she won an Oscar for that role in Silver Lion's playbook, but you gotta admit though, don't you ever get tired of seeing her acting like a bitch? I mean, not to mention the fact that she's sleepwalking throughout the entire movie too. She, she's, and I hate to say this, but she's also uh, very wooden. Consider that it was murdered, which, <sighs> really? I mean, come on, man. He was all alone throughout this entire planet. He didn't have any choice. He had to do it. What can you do? <laughs> yeah, exactly. It, after the, this whole film fell apart, when she found out the dark secret, because, God damn it, I'm getting tired of this stupid, the unbelievable truth uh, cliche. That's where the film fell apart. And I didn't like that, because I wanted to see the interesting chemistry between her and Chris Pratt. So it would have worked. And I'm sorry, but it, it could have been so much better than this. Um, Lawrence Fishburne just seems particularly wasted. I mean, it seems to me like he was only there for a paycheck. And mostly because he was only there just for him to die. So that's no surprise. Also, Annie Garcia had a small role in the film, but unfortunately, well, I'll make that a tiny role, because he only showed up at the end of the film. So, yeah, we don't get to see much of him in the movie, because he was in the trailer. And, by the way, he played Captain Norris in the movie, so there you go. However, I did enjoy... Michael Sheen as Arthur, who's the android bartender of the Avalon, and he was actually very good in this film. He, he really shows a lot of uh, spark, and he's very humorous. Uh, I feel like, yeah, he's the kind of guy uh, 
I could trust. But, however, I couldn't trust him when he spilled out the beans to Aurora about the about that dark secret that that Jim advised not to tell him about. But god damn it man. I, I just hate that. I mean the special effects look really neat. I mean it looks uh, impressive the way they did it. Where you get to see um, how the ship moves and how you see the uh, the uh, involver you know, already been functioning the entire ship and then you see how uh, unique it looked with, with all the uh, with all the pods and all the uh, the effects on the screens and all of that and you get to see the videos and you get to see um, the video games with the that basketball game where we basically see the cheerleaders on the background cheering and then you see a Dance Dance Revolution type of game where you just see two, you know, one guy and one girl in the background and, and just playing that particular uh, game of, of any dance song that you have. So I thought, wow, this is really cool. And the fact that they were watching a movie and then they're having a couple drinks and all that, it's just almost like a night to remember <laughs> in a way. You have one guy and one girl in the background and and just playing that particular uh, game of of any dance song that you have. So I thought, wow, this is really cool. And the fact that they were watching a movie and then they're having a couple drinks and all that, it's just almost like a night to remember <laughs> in a way. And of course, there's a memorable moment in the film where we see Aurora in a swimming pool to all of a sudden the gravity had went off uh, from the ship and then we see uh, the water flowing all the way up to the top with uh, Aurora swimming in it so it was going way out of control you see uh, Gus actually waving his arms uh, all the way up too while he's still standing still in the bed and then we see um, Jim actually floating all the way up while he was trying to fix something here so wow <laughs> until the gravity was back on and then they went all the way down still <laughs> it just could have been so much better and I, I wanted to like this movie I really did but it just didn't work it was very shallow well anyway it's not worth it so I mean it it, it could be worth watching just for the effects and the performance by um, Pratt and Sheen because to me it should have been just him and Michael Sheen in, in the movie instead of uh, Jennifer Lawrence I mean or maybe they could have cast someone else to play her role then I think the movie would have been so much better in my opinion um, I mean because as good as Lawrence can be I, I think she could do better um, I wish Andy Garcia had more screen time. I mean, it's just sad that he only gets like a, a tiny uh, role. Lawrence Fishburne could have had something better too, but well, there you go. So that's Passengers, and I had to give this movie one and a half star. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.